Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking a little bit about pKa and pH. Now, there are a lot of questions that we usually get that are talking about, you know, getting a molecule or an amino acid that has a certain pKa, and we put it in different environments or different pHs. And one question we can ask is, what percentage will be in the ionic form? Or what percentage will be in the protonated form? Basically, you're asking is, as you take an amino acid with a certain pKa and you're manipulating the environment or the pH that it's put in, what percentage will be in what form? Okay, so let's go through a couple examples and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. So just a little bit of background information. Like I said before, when we're talking about pH, pH talks about the environment that the molecule is put in. So we can change the pH. We can put it in a very acidic environment with a low pH or a very basic environment with a high pH. The other thing that we have is the pKa. Now the pKa is talking about the molecule itself. So if I have a certain molecule, the pKa is not gonna change. But what I, can, what I can change is the pH or the environment that it's put in. And the relationship between pH and pKa can be described by this henderson hasselbach equation, all right? This is definitely very important. So we're gonna use this a lot and let's just go through what it means, okay? So we're saying pH equals pKa plus the logarithmic scale or plus log of A minus, which is the conjugate base. We're talking about acids and bases over HA, which is just the acid itself. Now, conjugate base, acid, A minus HA, that kind of confuses me sometimes. What I like to think about is, when we do things a lot, a lot in chemistry and biology, we usually put the products on top and the reactants on the bottom. Now, that's how I like to think of it. In the acid-base reaction, the acid loses or donates a proton, which is right here, and then what is left of it is the conjugate base, which is up right here, which is the product. So I just think products over reactants, and that makes it a lot simpler for me. So just remember this, exact, this equation, and we'll use it over and over again. Now I just have one last thing before we get to our example. I have this golden rule. Now, there's a lot of ways you can think about pKa and pH, but how I like to think about it is very simple. I say there's one golden rule, and if it doesn't apply, then we go to something else. If pKa is higher than pH, then the protonated form wins. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, you're always given pH, you're always given pKa. If the pKa is higher than the pH, than the environment that it's in, then the protonated form wins. All right? So basically, we're saying that when pKa is higher than pH, then the protonated form wins, so we have a lot of acid. This is the protonated form right here, because it has the hydrogen with it, okay? So remember, everything wants to be protonated and have those extra hydrogens. So just follow this golden rule whenever you're stuck. If pKa is higher than pH, then the protonated form wins, okay? Now let's go through this example, and remember, the golden rule is never too far away. Let's go through this nice and simple question. Question one. An amino acid has a pKa of 6.4 and is put in a fairly basic environment that has a pH of 8.4. What percentage of the amino acid will exist in the protonated form? Now, you can see this word right here, amino acid. It can really be replaced by anything. Any kind of name of a specific amino acid, any molecule, it doesn't really matter. The same concept happens over and over again. So let's go through this question. First thing I like to do, Write out what equation we're going to use. We're going to use the henderson hasselbalch equation, which is pH equals pKa plus log. And then we have products over reactants. Now, however, you want to remember this equation, that's up to you. But it's definitely important to remember this because this is always usually a good first step. Nice. Now, let's plug in the numbers we have. 
Well, what do we have? Well, we're given a pKa of 6.4 and a pH of 8.4. And we're asked what percentage of the amino acid will exist in the protonated form. So we're talking about, what are we asking for? Well, this question is asking about, uh, this is kind of ugly, but it's kind of asking how much will be in the protonated form or the acidic form, okay? So HA, nice. Now we just have to plug in the numbers, pH, 6.4, pKa, or, sorry, uh, let's go, we're given a pH of 8.4, pKa of 6.4, and then Plus log of this stuff. Okay. Now, all we're going to do is just we're trying to isolate for HA. So we just do a little bit of math. So what we're going to do is we're going to do we're going to move pKa to this side. So that means we have to subtract it. So this becomes 8.4 minus 6.4, which is just 2. 2 equals 2 equals the log of this and how do we get rid of log? Well we're just going to put it to the power of 10. So 10 or sorry 10 to the power so 10 to the power of 2 equals products over reactants, okay? Now 10 to the power of 2 equals what? So we'll just come over here, equals 100, okay? So 100 equals A minus over HA, products over reactants. Remember, which, what are we looking for again? We're looking for HA, so we have to isolate that. So just remember any fractions over 1, and now we have all our numbers. Now, we're trying to find what percentage of HA exists. Well, it's going to be, from this equation, we know that we have 100, 100 A minus to every 1 HA. And that means that we have 1, if we're looking for HA, we have 1 over 100 of the A minus plus 1 of the HA itself, which is how much total we have. So out of the HA, we have 1 out of the total, which equals 1 out of 101. Or you figure it out to be 0.99%. 0.99%HA. And there's the answer right there. So using the henderson hasselbach equation and the information that we're given, we're able to isolate what we're looking for and figure out what percentage will be in what form. So we plug in all the numbers, we find that our ratio is 100 to 1 for every conjugate base to every acid. So we're trying to isolate for the acid. So that means we have 1 out of total, which is 100 plus 1. And that gives us around 0.99% or around 1% of the time we'll get the conjugate, or sorry, we'll get the acid, which is the pronated form. Nice. Now, if you want to do the other one and figure out how much conjugate base do we get, well, you can just figure out 100 over 101, or you can just do 100 minus this. Okay? Sweet.